Good evening, this is still Sunday Express and tonight we're putting into perspective matters of land reforms, urban development as well as affordable housing. A quick fact about this particular ministry. Now, the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development, the mandate is to uh, national lands policy and management, physical planning of land use, land transaction, survey and mapping, land adjudication, settlement matters, rural settlement and planning. It also deals with matters of land registration, a national uh, geospatial data, infrastructure, land and property valuation services, as well as land administration. Further on, the ministry is charged with the following functions. National lands policy and management, physical planning and land use, land transactions, survey and mapping, as well as land adjudication. Also settlement matters, rural settlement planning, that is the eco-village, land registration, national spatial in infrastructure, land and property valuation services, as well as administration. That's just about to give you an overview of what the mandate of this particular docket has in the far, as far as government organogram is concerned. These are the main objectives. Ensure accessibility, equity, and sustainable management of land resources for socioeconomic development, as well as strengthen institutional capacity for efficient and effective service delivery. The mission is to facilitate improvement of the livelihood of Kenyans through efficient and administration, equitable access, efficient land administration, equitable access, secure tenure, and sustainable management of land resources. Those are just some of uh, the mission that this particular docket has. Then the vision is to be globally competitive uh, to in, a, to in a sustainable and land management in as far as it's concerned. Now, the man of the moment is here with us in studio. That is none other than Cabinet Secretary Land Reforms and urban housing as well as urban development that is mr zekaria Njero. question first question where are we what's the status report on as far as matters of land reforms you know under the vision 2030 is concerned including the digitization process to you sir thank you very much uh, regina first for the invites to come here and uh, share what uh, the ministry is doing and also have uh, conversation with Kenyans on how far we are at uh, on matters land. Um, digitization process is one of the land reforms that uh, the government has embarked on and I want to uh, most sincerely thank those who are before me because they had attempted uh, to digitize uh, land records and where we started from I want to uh, tell Kenyans that we are really doing well on matters land digitization because we know when we are fully digitized, it will mean Kenyans will get uh, services in a better way, in a faster way, and in a more secure way. Mm -hmm. uh, with the manual system, uh, there has been a lot of insecurity of uh, land records where you find uh, records disappearing, records being mutated. And this has adversely affected uh, Kenyans when they want to tra transact on matters land. It has not been easy, but I want to tell Kenyans. We are there, and uh, soon we'll be done with Nairobi. And from the lessons that we've learned, uh, rolling out to other counties will be much easier and much faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, thanks for mentioning one thing, and the issue is the security of these documents, yeah. given the history that we've had when it comes mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. uh, the land registries. Mm -hmm. Given uh, what we have seen uh, with government systems, for example, the teams, it has been failing sometimes mm -hmm. and has been a subject to attempted hacks. Mm -hmm. We are digitizing these land records. How mm -hmm. safe and secure are these documents? Yes, uh, I want to assure Kenyans that the system we are using is very secure. We have uh, backups uh, in several areas. So what it means is that if one, uh, if the system uh, is hacked or fails, then we have a backup facility that will make sure we get back to where we are. Mm -hmm. yes. And that brings us to the question tonight. We are asking you, do you think that the digitization of the land registries is a solution to land problems? Do you think that uh, the digitization of the land registries is a solution to land problems? Our Twitter handle is at KBC Channel 1 and the hashtag we're using tonight is hashtag CSGero. Get tweeting and also we welcome your feedback in regard to issues that you want. 
Cabinet Secretary Zakaria Njero to address tonight on Sunday Express. Now back uh, to looking at where we are. So how far are we in the finalization and the operationalization of the community land bill that is meant to address adjudication as well as uh, 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 titling of uh, community land? Uh, yes, we, are, we, we have really moved uh, very well on uh, that issue. And uh, we are collaborating with the county governments because on matters uh, community land, we are expecting, uh, we, we are working closely with the county governments who give us the inventories of the, of the communities uh, living within there. And once we get uh, those inventory, we verify and uh, after that we, we, we gazette. So mainly the, the whole exercise will be faster if the county governments, concerned county governments, mm -hmm. also fast track that process. Because to us, once we receive that Verify and Gazette, then the next process is for us to go ahead and uh, start the process of issuing the titles. Mm. Yes. Now, see, as the issue of squatters has right. been a thorny mm. issue when right. it comes to right. matters right. of right. land ownership mm. as well mm. as land mm. reforms. Mm. From your ministry, mm. uh, what are you doing to ensure that we do away with matters of uh, squatters, especially on encroachment into private land? Um, squattering has been a major issue in this country. And uh, it's an issue that even His Excellency the President uh, has directed that we really uh, deal with it. Um, in the previous administration, uh, we managed to settle 10,900 people with, uh, with, with very little allocation of 300 million. But in this financial year, the government has allocated 2.5 billion, which will be used to settle squatters uh, across the country. And most so where we have this problem is in the coastal, coastal region. Mm -hmm. So this is an issue that we are, we, we are real handling. But again, when we are talking about squatters, um, we mainly uh, think of the rural landless. It's also good to let Kenyans know that even in the urban areas. Yes. We have these urban poor people who live in informal settlements, who live in, in deplorable conditions. We should also be thinking about them. And as a ministry, through Kenya Informal Settlement Improvement Program, we are handling that issue so that we don't only put all our energies and efforts to the rural, um, to the rural uh, landless. Mm -hmm. Even in the urban areas, we have, uh, we have squatters. Uh, who are actually even living in a more bad shape than uh, you you would think. So we have taken that also as a, as a ministry, and uh, we are doing very well with other development partners in making sure that we improve the lives of those living in the in the in the, in, in the informal settlement. Mm -hmm. It's good also to let Kenyans know that 61 percent of uh, people living uh, in urban areas live in those informal settlements. So it's a big group that we should really think about mm -hmm. and see how well we can make their life better. So, so far, how many titles have been issued? Uh, we have issued 400, over 475,000 titles, but our target uh, by the end of the year, we should be hitting uh, more than half a million uh, titles. Mm -hmm. One, uh, as, a, as, a, as a State Department of uh, Lands and Physical Planning, we were not well funded in the last administration. And we also generate a lot of revenue for the government. So the current administration has realized that and it has now funded, given more funding to the State Department of uh, Lands and uh, uh, Physical Planning. And that way we are going to do more survey, we are going to process more titles, and also, also Kenyans who are supposed to be, you know, to have titles, will have them and help mm -hmm. them improve their economic activities. When you talk about land ownership, right. uh, we, it cannot be devoid of politics. Right. 
as history has it, when matters of land are tied to politics. From where you sit at the man at the helm of this particular department, how are you handling this? How are you dissociating uh, you know, matters of politics when it comes to land reforms? Yes, uh, this is a conversation that we've had with uh, politicians, with the governors, with the MPs, and uh, I want to confess that we are all... Um, uh, we all want to sort out this, this problem. So with proper participation, public participation and engagement, we are, and that's why digitization is coming in, that whatever we are doing is right. So politicians, we, ha we are working closely with them, and at the end of the day, if from the regions they come from, there are people are uh, handled well on matters land and titles issued, mm -hmm. they also get a plus uh, as far as uh, the, those communities are concerned. So this is a concerted effort where all of us are, are working together and engaging and uh, closely uh, 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 talking together. And uh, that way, I can assure you, by the end of it all, uh, our people will be happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looking at history once again, when right. you talk about historical land injustices mm. Mm. in this current moment, mm. how is your ministry addressing that issue? Um, that's also another area that uh, we are facing, but with the help uh, of the leaders, uh, political leaders and uh, the ministry, we are looking at it in a way that uh, it, it's a win-win for all of us. Mm -hmm. And that's why when it comes to settling of uh, the, the, the squatters who, who get into private uh, lands and of also government lands, we have a way of resettling uh, those people in an amicable way. And uh, so that if it's, a, it's private land. We engage the owners of those land and see the best way to compensate them and resettle those people who have uh, 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 squatted in those lands. Now to housing. Right. The housing fund is fully operational. Right. From where you sit, mm. how does it look when it comes to matters of, you know, um, onboarding onto mm. this? There was a lot of right. push and pull, right. court cases and such, but right. that's a direct um, One thing I want all Kenyans to know is that... Um, we have shortage of houses in urban areas. The demand today is 250,000 units per year. But what the market is providing is only 50,000. And out of these 50,000, you get only 1%. Uh, uh, it's meant for the low cadre, you know, the low income earners. And that's why the government has taken that deliberate effort to make sure that we fill in that gap of the 200,000 through the affordable housing program. Uh, through the, 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 the finance bill 2023, uh, that uh, process and that program of affordable housing will now soon taking shape. I want to tell Kenyans that uh, in the last administration, we had 9,945 uh, affordable units which are in construction. But in this new administration, His Excellency the President has launched 13 projects which will give close to 40,000 units. And if we did that, if the government did that without, without the housing fund, then you can imagine how much more the government is going to do now that we have uh, cheap finances through the affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Then the question is, mm -hmm. what constitutes affordable? Because it's debatable. Right. Does affordable mean social housing? Or mm -hmm. what affordable, what is affordable housing? Um, when you look, I'll give an example. Uh, if today you want to buy a two-bedroomed house in Nairobi, uh, Mostly it will cost you between 4,500 to 7,000 uh, to, to 7.5, depending on the location. But with the, our current affordable housing, uh, in our current affordable housing program, a two bedroomed house, we want to squeeze it to maximum 1.2 million. Meaning, one can choose for a long term purchase scheme where 
the rent you are paying today, you can be paying the same amount of money for a longer period to own a house. So there is a provision of renting to, to own, own under oh, the yes, affordable yes, house. Yes, it is. Okay. Of course, also there are those who would want to pay cash. So all those uh, um, uh, uh, options are there. To get into the affordable housing, uh, you also join uh, the portal, the, 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 the Bomayangu portal, through uh, USSD Good. star 832 hash, where you register with 200 shillings. Then through that platform, you select the type of house you want. After you do that, then you start saving. You can even start saving off plan. You'll be allocated a house, you choose the house you want, and that way before the program, the project is over, you realize you'll have saved enough. But also, uh, one other condition, for you to get that house, you must have paid 10% of the value of that house. 10% yes. deposit of yes, that uh, house. Yes, deposit. Mm -hmm. yes. And you've said we have currently uh, 13 projects that are going to generate around 40,000 yes, yes. housing yes. units. Yes. Now, what then, uh, what are you doing? Because we have had this project before. We've right. seen it in the last right. regime and we're currently here. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, especially to the private sector, to incentivize private sector mm -hmm. to get into this particular right. space mm -hmm. and construct this mm -hmm. particular housing units? Because government mm -hmm. cannot do it alone. Good. Uh, before the problem was the offtake. Uh, you are a developer, you want to come and invest. By the end of the day, after you're through the problem, you want to be paid. So there was that problem before. But now with the housing levy. We have attracted so many people, so many developers who want to come now and work with the, you know, with the government. And uh, that we, we also giving them incentives. One, we are working closely, the national government and the county governments are working closely together so that uh, on land we get it free. National government where we have land, we, we get it free on affordable housing and the county government. And I want to report here that uh, 42 county governments have already signed an MOU with, with us as a ministry on that collaboration. And that shows you the willingness of uh, both levels of government uh, to work together. That's why we, are, we have so many projects ongoing all mm -hmm. over the country. Mm -hmm. So one we get land free. That makes the, the, the price of that, uh, of, 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 of that house uh, go down because you know the value of land contributes a lot uh, in any housing uh, project. project. Yeah, so we are working in collaboration with, with the county the government and that is helping us a lot. Another issue here to mention is that we have come up with, um, with a program where in each constituency, in each because we are going to build 200 units across the country. And this also is working very well with the MPs. They are the ones who are getting land for us. And uh, that way, we'll make sure that uh, we'll have enough houses mm -hmm. and fill in that gap that I had earlier mentioned. Mm -hmm. Now, that that is well in. Now, let me take you back to the Bomayangu platform. Right. There are those who had already onboarded in the previous right. regime. Mm -hmm. What is the way forward for them? Uh, do they automatically now onboard onto the housing uh, housing oh, yes. site? Oh yes. oh, yes. Oh, yes. As long as you, you, you are there, you still wait. If the houses are ready, in fact, most of them now who had onboarded earlier, for those uh, projects that are complete, most of them are in those houses. So it, it, it's a continuous uh, process, but the only thing to remember is one ID, one. Let's housing. get to the one ID, one, one, uh, one housing unit. Mm. When there was a lot of debate when it comes to this particular fund, the mm. argument was mm. first, mm. I've already, I'm in the process of building or constructing my home. Mm. Secondly, you'd find a home, uh, I mean, uh, a couple who are married and, mm. you know, each is in their formal employment. Mm. So they're all contributing. Mm. So let's clarify, mm. one ID, one mm -hmm. housing unit, but we cannot have both living there at the same time. What are options then? Let's unpack that aspect. Mm, uh, I still insist uh, on, on, on the same. You have, you, I have my ID, you mm. have your ID. Yes. You can, you'll get your house, I'll ah. get my house. So. It, it's that is the concept. That's the concept. The, actually, ideally here is that I cannot own two houses yes. because we don't want to create another um, 
uh, way mm -hmm. of uh, those who have getting more houses and maybe selling you know making making business out, out of, it. of it yes yes sir. but mm. these particular housing units can mm. actually be inherited yes they can be inherited true they can be inher uh, inherited once you are not there your child okay. your children can inherit uh, that home mm. and again that house cannot be sold until you cannot transfer it until seven years. Until seven, seven years. Seven years, yes. Of occupancy? Oh, yes, of occupancy. Seven of occupancy. years of occupancy, oh, oh, yes. not, co not construction. No, 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 no. Seven occupancy. years of occupancy. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Now, for someone who is maybe waiting to retire maybe in the next one year or so, mm -hmm. they've already been onboarded by virtue of this is a loan now. Right. They are contributing towards this right. particular mm -hmm. fund. Mm -hmm. Can they transfer what they have already contributed or what happens there in that particular aspect? Transfer. What happens? I'm imagining what happens with their funds. They've already... No, the there's a way that you can ask for refund. Okay, a yes, refund. Yes, uh -huh. you can ask for refund if you feel you have contributed some money and for one reason or another you don't want to continue. Mm. So there is the same platform of Boma Yangu yes. will instruct you on how to go about it and you get back your money. I think in, 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 within six months you, you can get back your, your, your money. So how soon can one get back their refund? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It, it, uh, currently, I think it's six months. Six, six months? months after you, you you apply for that refund. Mm. Yeah. Now these funds, do they accrue interest? Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. They do. So once you ask for your refund, you get it with the interest are, are closed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now we have seen now also there's also low uptake of mortgages. Mm. And we have now the housing funds right. as it mm. is. We're targeting to increase the target of uptake in as far as mortgages are concerned around thirty thirty thousand. Actually we are at thirty thousand. We, we want to go to a million. Mm -hmm. And with this affordable housing program we reach there. How do we go about it? Because we're still seeing, even with the KMRC coming into place, mm -hmm. uh, Kenyans are still not taking up mortgage as it should, as it's envisioned. It's because the mortgage was expensive. But so what we are doing as a ministry and a government is to make sure that we, we, we make sure that the mortgage is not expensive. So why, it's not that Kenyans don't want to own homes, but then it has been very expensive for them to mm -hmm. own those homes. Mm -hmm. So the government is now making it easier for Kenyans to own homes. Of course, you know, uh, no many bottlenecks. You know, as I've told you, the Bomayangu portal is a very easy uh, thing to get into and to start paying and, uh, you know, saving. So ideally, Kenyans want homes, but it had been made very difficult for them. Mm -hmm. But with the current program of AHP, most Kenyans, and I believe uh, within the next five years, we'll have over um, one million Kenyans uh, having mortgages. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good news. Right. I intend to be a homeowner soon. Right. But now, that, let's talk about the issue of, um, you know, um, accessing finance, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, funds towards mm -hmm. owning home. Mm -hmm. If I'm already, we're already in this particular fund, right. can one use their contributions, with their contribution mm -hmm. to access funds to buy the home oh, within yeah. the program? Yes, you can. Of course, you, you, know, you know, we have the KMRC, uh, yes. as you had mentioned, we also have other financial institutions mm -hmm. who will also be lending money but within a very uh, reasonable uh, interest rate mm -hmm. actually should be single digit single digit yes yeah single digit so that way they are going also we are going to partner with uh, with um, with those financial institutions uh, through the uh, KMRC and that way we have seen a lot of interest a lot of even these financial institutions are also really interested in making sure that uh, they are engaged as far as uh, giving out uh, finances to one inch is concerned mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now there's a question of does this fund also now also cater for social housing Oh, yes. Or is it, it a parallel program? No, no, no. It does cater for social housing and even market. In fact, it is, it is anything that will improve, any project that will improve uh, on the lives of uh, the hustlers. The, this funding, this, uh, this uh, housing fund will, uh, will, will be able to be used in that uh, uh, per perspective. So it is a fund that is meant to transform the livelihoods of mm -hmm. Kenyans. And when you also look at it, um, we are also not just building houses. Within that establishment, we are coming up also with um, 
infrastructure development. We are doing roads, we are doing sewers, we are, doing, we are bringing power, we are bringing in water. So it is, it, 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 it is a whole ecosystem that will help Kenyans live in a decent way. The other thing we should look at it, apart from the four walls, this program mm -hmm. will also uh, create employment. Mm -hmm. One unit gives direct jobs between three and five people. And between five and eight, they get in, uh, indirect employment. Mm -hmm. So we're also going to create employment to your, our young uh, men and women. And that way also we get the, our Juakali sector mm -hmm. being active. We have 69 um, standardized components that we have ring-fenced that, uh, that are going to be produced and manufactured by uh, the Juakali sectors. The Juakali sector. Yeah, so meaning, apart from the houses, there's also that other the aspect effect. Yes, of, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, creating jobs. The cost of construction, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, also is affected by the materials that are used. Right. And I like that you have said that there are things that the Juakali is going to be right, doing. Right, right. When you talk about affordable, we are also seeing mm -hmm. emerging trends when it comes to building and construction, where mm -hmm. we are going green, right. as well right. as going for cheaper materials. materials. Mm -hmm. But do we have the requisite capacity locally to actually uh, get onto this project? Other than the Juakali aspect, I'm mm -hmm. looking at the green material mm -hmm. as well as, you know, mm -hmm. these emerging trends. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are encouraging. We are encouraging investors. And I can assure you, most of them have come in. Mm -hmm. um, um, we have uh, countries to, you know, to look into, like Singapore. We have uh, Egypt here doing very well. We have um, we have uh, Morocco. So we have countries where we feel, uh, where we can learn from, mm -hmm. and uh, we have had those uh, private uh, developers and investors coming because they also want to invest, and they have uh, they have. Uh, ideas they have done that elsewhere so we are going to incorporate all that and of course when we have industries and companies um, manufacturing locally that's also an added way of our people mm -hmm. getting employment and using the local materials mm -hmm. to to you know to get these products on board the 13 projects the 40,000 mm -hmm. units mm -hmm. where are they yes um, we have one in Kero, uh, Embu of 200 uh, units. We have one in Kerogoya, uh, please call it, uh, um, uh, there's a name, but it's in, in, it, it is in, yeah, in, in Kerogoya. We have Thika, we have uh, Roiro, we have uh, Mavoko, we have uh, Mukuru, uh, the meteorological site. We have Homa Bay, where we have uh, Nakuru, we have, um, we have, we have, uh, recently we had Kakamega and uh, Vihiga. So they cut across. They cut across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and in total, sir, mm. what would you say, how many counties have actually come on board, you know, to provide this particular uh, land for this particular project? We have, those where we have launched are, uh, we have Homa Bay, we have uh, Nakuru, we have uh, Kiambu, we have uh, Embu, we have Kir, uh, uh, Kirinyaga, um, and Nairobi. But we have 42 MOUs we've signed mm -hmm. with uh, governors, meaning soon we'll be rolling out those More. projects. Yeah, More. In those, uh, now, so before we start sampling some of the feedback, because it's coming in hot, uh, there's a question that we have been posing to Kenyans on matters of digitization. Mm -hmm. How then adequately and... Uh, uh, Candidly, sir, the issue of land cartels has been mm. quite a thorny one. Mm. Uh, other than digitization, mm. what are you doing as a ministry to actually do away with this menace once and for all? We've seen, you know, families go poor and even people losing their lives over issues of uh, corruption, land fraud and such. Um, for many years, we've heard about corruption and cartels uh, in uh, the land registries. I'm proud to inform Kenyans that um, this will now be history with digitization. Our digitization and um, automation policy will sideline cartels. Why cartels were coming in is because the process was, you know, had hinges. But with digitization, proper digitization, you'll be able to transact 
seated in the comfort of your seat. So you really not need a go between mm -hmm. coming to assist you. So the cure for cartels is digitization. Wow. And that's why we are keen to make sure mm -hmm. that it works. Now, so there was a curious case uh, when we posed the question online. There's a person who said that they currently hold the original land title. Mm -hmm. However, when they do their search, mm -hmm. it is actually owned by someone else. Right. But they have the original right. title. How do they go about it? Um, I want to repeat it again, Regina, that for us to cure that, we got digital. So in such cases, we call the two. Bring your documents, bring your documents, and then we are in a position to authenticate mm -hmm. and see who has, who is genuinely the owner of that land. So are you saying, sir, that this person actually walks to the land ministry with their document and lodged the claim? Because their worry is once they mm -hmm. raise the issue, mm -hmm. this person is mm -hmm. already has mm -hmm. worked around the ownership and has tweaked one, two, three things. They're already living in that particular piece of land. Mm -hmm. They have developed it. Mm -hmm. They have the original mm -hmm. title. But when they go check, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. on their documents, it mm -hmm. belongs to someone else. Yeah, that's what we are saying. We have an inquiry desk. When you have such issues yes. mm -hmm. and you know for sure that uh, fraud has taken place, yes. the easiest way is to come to our offices. We authenticate. We see how best, uh, we see who really owns that land. Yes. And once we we are fully convinced through documents that you are the owner, then uh, there's a legal process to, you know, to follow, to make sure that the rightful person gets back the land they own. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Now, Nancy, I'm sure you have been answered adequately by our guest tonight. That is Cabinet Secretary Lands and Urban Development, as well as Housing. That is a career injury that you need to get to the inquiry at the office and lodge your complaint there. It is going to be tackled. Now, let's also sample some of your views that have been coming through on our various social media platforms, including Facebook and Twitter. And the first question to you, sir, is from Toro Hemund. He is asking, uh, how will the houses be distributed or sold, yet one has paid uh, through the housing levy? How will the affordable houses be distributed? That is Toro Hedmond. Um, for you to get this house, the first thing, you must uh, register yes. uh, with the Bomayango platform. And as I said, once you register, there's a fee of 200 shillings, and after that, you select you select uh, the kind of scheme you want, the place. You see, we are not going to have all these affordable houses across the country. So if you live in Nairobi and you feel your rural home is near, that's where you want to have a home, you can buy there. So you will all be guided uh, through the Bobayangu, mm -hmm. but you, have, you are the person to make that choice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then James Ouma preempted a question I had for you, and he's asking, what measures is the ministry going to put in place to ensure that those tenders uh, for con construction tender uh, materials are not given to the tall people in government? The houses? Yes, uh, the, 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 the tenders. The tenders. I, I think he's talking well, about those no, who have already it, been no, in the it, system. It is an open, it is an open tender where proper processes are followed mm -hmm. before finally the the tender is given out so mine is to tell those the contractors and the developers who are applying make sure all your documents are in order and uh, it, will, it, it, it will be fair competition. Mm -hmm. So there will be no worry that you are going to favor you know, some people. One or the other. No, no. But then also, Bonas, yes, is there a cap mm -hmm. to how many projects, like, say, Regina can actually undertake in this particular project? Um, it all depends on your competence, on your capacity. Okay. You know? Uh, because we want to see projects uh, happening. We want... Once we give you, you are given that tender, you start working, you know. So here it all depends on your capacity. Okay. Because also we, uh, 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 you have seen we've had many uh, government uh, projects that start and then stall. We were going there. So that is something we really <laughs> don't want. And you see, and the public works have been having that problem. So what we want to do now is to make sure that once we give you uh, that project, that tender you we make sure that you have the capacity to do it because we don't want again to have stalled projects, uh, stalled projects mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. and as you've said you have issues especially mm -hmm. when it comes mm -hmm. to the urban development mm -hmm. stalled mm -hmm. projects mm -hmm. what are you doing about it yeah um under public works yes um 
we have we have uh, initiated uh, a program where all those stalled projects will now start uh, uh, being constructed. Um, we had five, just to mention, five county government uh, headquarters. That is the Rakanivi, Lamu, Tana River, Nyandarwa, I think Isiolo. Yes, Isiolo. All those had stalled. But currently, mm -hmm. I think apart from one, the rest now already have been retendered and the work is in progress. So what we don't want to encounter in future is such kind stalled. of uh, yeah, yeah, okay, stalled project. Yeah. Now, one last one from James Omar before we also quickly look at what Ken Sirkal has to say. Mm -hmm. That he's asking, apart from the 10 slots Zawatuam Kono, <laughs> will the question of unemployment be solved? And if yes, how and for what period of time that is one uh, then the last one uh, from this particular platform is that what are the penalties for not paying monthly rent <laughs> for affordable housing we can start off with the first and the second. Uh, right um one um it, it was the issue of employment yes, yes. opportunities yes. and opportunities for what division are opportunities are there you know think of any construction uh, project what you find there, you find we have plumbers, we have uh, masonry works, we have uh, we have electrician, we have uh, you know our oh, warm corner. So th th there are a lot of works that uh, really are created. We have the mama who, who who comes every day to give tea and the chapati, and then she's paid on Saturday when you know. So there's a lot of other indirect um, employments uh, that are, or jobs that are within that whole ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So on the other question was on um, what? <laughs> what are the penalties for not penalties. paying rent uh, in the affordable housing? housing. Uh, <laughs> of course, we want, we want people to be disciplined. Once you acquire this house, one, you should realize this is not ra just rent. This is your house you are paying for. Mm -hmm. So the more you delay, then it means after some point, the house might be taken from you. So we just want Kenyans to have that discipline that once you engage yourself in that program of acquiring that unit, mm -hmm. you do everything possible to make sure that you don't default, that even when you default, you should have a very good reason to do that. But I'm sure, unlike rent, most people will not, will make sure they even pay faster so that you can own that uh, house and have that section of uh, title, okay. which you can use to be, even to get money from the bank. I think also what Sirikal is shying away from yeah. asking is that if he doesn't, <laughs> if he defaults, will he be kicked off uh -huh. the house since uh -huh. he had already paid mm -hmm. some amount previously? Mm -hmm. So that's why we are saying most of them, I don't think most of them will really want that to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, I don't think. And it's also it will not be the wish of the government okay. to kick out people. But of course, there are rules and regulations that one has to follow. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want, just want to encourage Kenyans for this program to succeed. Uh -huh. Let's all pay so that more Kenyans can also, you know, get that uh, latitude of mm -hmm. getting uh, a house like you. Now, as we're having this conversation, we're mm. marking one year of the Kenya Kwanza administration right. and mm. that you are the helm at uh, the mm. lands uh, okay. uh, department, so to right. speak, the ministry. Yeah. What do you envision? What is your personal vision? for the next 12 months, sir? One, um, on matters uh, land, um, as I have indicated, digitization to me has been a key agenda. And uh, once we are through with Nairobi, as I indicated, we'll now roll out to other counties. Because if we do it in Nairobi mm -hmm. and leave the other counties and other registries, then uh, we'll have done half work. So. My vision for the next one year is to make sure we roll out uh, digit, the digital, the, the national land information management system to other uh, registries across the country. Mm -hmm. That is uh, key. Two, uh, we have a tackling program. We know we have so many Kenyans who are living uh, on lands, but they don't have the tenure uh, document. So we have also, and you have seen for the last few months, the, His Excellency the President has been going across the country issuing titles and you'd see the excitement. People have stayed for more than 40 years, 30 years and once they get that uh, document they are really excited. Yes. So that m prompted, uh, prompted us as a ministry to make sure that every Kenyan who deserves 
to have a title. Mm -hmm. Gets it. So this is a program that we are really pushing, and I know in the next one year we want to move to one million titles uh, issues. Then also the settlement of uh, the landless, as we had uh, discussed, we want people, say, um, squatters who are in either public or uh, government land to be settled, mm -hmm. and also look into those who are also living, the squatters who are living in the urban areas, we make sure that we improve on the, on, on the areas they live in. Uh, under KISIP, uh, Kenya Informal Settlement Improvement Program, we have also that program of um, issuing titles to those informal settlements. We, we regularize where they are living. Mm -hmm. Another aspect, uh, Regina, is that of, uh, of um, the colonial villages. You can imagine after 60 years, we have still what we are calling colonial villages. So we have also embarked on making sure that those people, Kenyans who are living in those colonial villages, get titles. We have started that with Nyandarwa. Um, we'll be going to Nyeri and all those other uh, counties where we have such people to mm -hmm. make sure that we improve on their conditions where they live and also uh, come up with infrastructures that uh -huh. will improve that their support. Life support yes. that. Now, before I let you go, would want to know now that the levy, the fund is operational, how mm. much is it breaking in on a month? Um, on 15th of last month, we collected, you know, it's being collected by the Kenya Revenue Authority. They are the collecting agents. They collected uh, 2.65 billion, but the expected monthly um, uh, contribution will be 6.2 billion. 6.2 billion. Yes. In your achievements there, you've talked about cleaning up uh, matters of uh, urban development. Right. Are you concerned about the mushrooming uh, urban development that you're having, especially within Nairobi? Uh, actually, it's not only Nairobi. Uh -huh. Let me tell you the r rural urban migration. Okay. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's quite high. Uh -huh. uh, and this is not only in Kenya. It cuts even globally. Yeah. So we must plan. We must plan for that urbanization. Because if we don't do it, then tomorrow we'll have a problem. Indeed. And then we look at it and say, and, 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 and this is a fact, the future is urban. The so is how urban. are we planning for this urban? We have to so adequately plan exactly, for it. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, that puts a cap uh, to tonight's conversation. We have been hosting none other than Cabinet Secretary Zakaria Mwangi of, sorry, Mwangi Njeri, yes, mm -hmm. of uh, Lands, Housing and Urban Development. And as I said, the future is urban, so we need to have adequate planning. I'm Regina Manyara. You're still watching Sunday Express. Now we speak sports with Daniel Wahome.